Hang on, if you're standing with your hands on the, your hips, I'll, no, I'll stand like that. Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah. Ready? All right. Okay. Oh, cool. Are we? What? Hello everybody and welcome to another TimberCon live stream. My name is Jake Russell. And I'm Jeff. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about uh, designing and implementing a dust extraction collection system into your relatively single car garage. That's right. And um, I've, got a I've got a small story to tell you before we get started, which is this. I, I managed to get an entire collection of uh, wood fine woodworker magazines, uh, stretching back to like the 70s, issue number one. And uh, what I noticed when I was reading them is that it's not until about the late 90s that you start having any reference in those woodworking magazines to dust extraction. So dust extraction now is a massive, massive topic for, for our customers, for all woodworkers. Everyone's aware that it's a health issue, it's a safety issue. So uh, that's why we're, we're focusing on it this month. Yeah, we get a lot of questions at the shop about it. Um, evidently, some of us still need to scrub up a bit ourselves. Uh, but fortunately, we've done a bit of the research so that you won't have to, and hopefully that translates to our chat today. Yep. Uh, a little bit of uh, housekeeping. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe the page. It helps us keep growing. We have got uh, the guys still working very hard uh, behind the cameras in the, in the Melbourne store. Uh, so if you do hear any background noise, we do apologise, but we are working very hard to keep you guys up to date and getting your orders out on time. So. Actually, if you want a shout out, you could probably just ring the store and they'll. You also could shout yeah, out to your, to your mum or something. Just hammer those phone lines because the guys <laughs> honestly aren't working hard enough. So please just keep calling. Um, if you do have any questions, make sure that you pop up in the chat or again, just give the guys a call. Uh, they'll be fielding the, fielding the phones all day. So. Right, so what we've done uh, is that we have, we have uh, simulated your average kind of single car garage space here in the shop. Mm -hmm. So there's this sawdust down on the floor and it's sort of in about the right size uh, to, of, a, of a single car garage. Approximately. Yeah, and if you've been reading uh, on the blog, uh, we've been talking about a, a fictional character called Alex, who is setting up dust extraction in their workshop. Um, and so we're gonna sort of follow that, um, that story through a bit today, show how that process works. Um, so we're gonna sort of build it kind of in the, in the, work, in the shop here. Yep, so I would say if you are Beginning to think about implementing a dust extraction system into your workshop, don't fret. Uh, it's much simpler than it seems. Um, obviously, there's a lot of different measurements going around. Um, cubic feet per minute, uh, pressure, uh, or static pressure, rather. Um, yeah, you've got the different really duct sizes. You, exactly, you know, glass gates, yeah. diameter of hosing. It's not something that uh, you really need to break down too drastically in a home workshop. Uh, if you're in industrial capacity, obviously, you're going to be worried about that a lot more but because we're in such a, most of our um, enthusiasts and hobbyists are in much smaller spaces, it requires much less, uh, much less breaking down of it. So it's much, it's much more straightforward in a smaller workshop. So the first thing you want to really get stuck into when you are thinking about implementing your dust extraction system at home or in your small workshop is to draw out a plan because otherwise you were just a blind leading yourself uh, through the darkness. Yeah. Um, so always start with your plan. So, so planning is like 90% of it. The building at the end is, is, is the, the small little bit at the end. You need to make sure that the, that the plan is pretty thorough and takes account of all sorts of contingencies and issues. So, um, so if, if, you're, if you just start building, you're gonna find that you've got ducting, you know, six months down the track, you're gonna be tripping over stuff, there's gonna be chaos in the workshop. Don't ask me how I know that. Um, I think everybody knows exactly yeah, how so you know that. Yeah. It's, uh, so please, please plan. So what we've done, voila, um, that's the French voila. We have uh, two drawings here, one on the other side of this whiteboard, obviously. But the first thing that we have done here is a plan view, or top down, for emphasis. Let's just swing that back and that's, that's the top of our heads there. As you can see, so the uh, full head of hair in the glass. We couldn't remember which one was so, which, so. Yeah, had to identify that as well. So plan view is obviously from the top down. Uh, you want to get a rough estimate or even as close to scale as you can just so that your visual aid is much simpler and much more straightforward. Uh, we have four machines with the option of five to put into Alex's workshop today, so we've gone ahead and done that. The only thing we've omitted is the table saw that Alex is thinking about putting into 
the workshop at some point. Someone's got their hand yes. up here. Studio, studio audience. Oh, now Alex is a Alex is a good friend of mine. No, Alex, um, Alex is old, mate. Alex is old, mate. Alex could be anybody, right? Alex yeah. could be um, a retired enthusiast who's, you know, Alex could be a young person who's got a couple of small kids and, and not a lot of space. But, but so Alex is specifically non-gender specific <laughs> as well. So that's why we chose the name Alex. Yeah. On the blog, on the website, there's, a, there's quite a lot of detail around what Alex's uh, requirements are and, 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 the, and the machines that they've got in their workshop. Alex is also someone who has a partner who is very frustrated with the fine dust particles <laughs> they keep seeping into the house. That's the important part. From Alex's workshop. That's so right. That's another thing that we're going to uh, add into the plan view. Right. Talk about and discuss rather today as well. So. So Alex's two main machines uh, that we're going to worry about today are the router table and the bandsaw. Alex also has a combination thickness of planer, and we'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, that's a bit of a special case, but it's important in the in the scheme of things. So, what is this? A single car garage? Single car garage, yeah. With the roller door kind of at your end. Yep. And here's the internal door into the house here. Yep. So there's your laundry. Right. Um, it's actually similar to what I've got at my house, yep. um, and uh, yeah, I've actually put, considered putting seal around your around your internal door, depending on what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So the basic plan is for Alex to have a dust collector over by the roller door, mm -hmm. kind of getting the dust flowing that way. Yes, sir. Why would you put a roller, the dust collector by the roller door? Because it's dusty, and the roller door can be opened. Exactly. There's a, there's a lot of o sort of overspray uh, from dust collection. Obviously, if you have a, a cloth needle filter bag, uh, it's not going to collect all those microns or those fine dust particles that go down to, say, 1 to 15 microns, which you'll definitely get from sanding uh, and you'll definitely get from using a table saw. So that really fine stuff, it will flow into the direction, hopefully, um, but the idea is that you keep it at least close to the door majority of what doesn't get caught by the dust collector goes straight outside. Does that answer your question, sir? It, that, it also means you can take the bin up to, from the wheelie bin you empty it. Yeah, it's route. convenient, right? Yeah. So, and then there's going to be a fixed line. So this line here, that has been very artfully drawn in red uh, ziggy zaggy, so that's, the, that's the, uh, the main trunk line, if you like. Think of it like a train, uh, a train set. Uh, that line there is fixed kind of in place, it's kind of permanent in the, in the, uh, in the garage. So it's, if you're renting, it might not be as permanent. If you own the place, you can do what you want, you can nail it into the wall, you can do whatever. Mm -hmm. You can run it along the floor or you can run it up high. Yep. The idea of running it up high is that it gets it off the floor, uh, it gets it out of the way of the impediment of your machines. If you've got a 100 mil line, uh, coming off your wall and then you're sliding your machine up to it, that just means that's more space that you're missing out on. So the idea by putting it on the wall and up on the ceiling is that it's completely out of the way uh, and you don't have to worry about moving it around. Yep. yep, and so then there are two branch lines off the main line. One services the bandsaw and one services the router table. So it's reasonably straightforward. Um, you can extrapolate this, this idea to any number of machines and you know, obviously big workshops do that. We, you've got a main line um, with lots of branches coming off there. The general principle is the more machines you have, the more machines you want to connect, the, the bigger in diameter that main line needs to be, the more capacity it needs to be able to carry basically. We'll, we'll touch on that. Um, we are going to the other way to alleviate that rather is the addition of blast gates and we're going to talk about all the bits and pieces that you may need for your dust extraction system in a second. Yep, can we have a look at the... I was going to say, I just want to flip this over to show you, if you're thinking before we do that, if you're wondering why the bandsaw and router table are placed in the dead centre of the uh, garage, this is just for... Not to scale. This is just, <laughs> just for effect. So we've also done an elevation view. So elevation being standing in front of the wall and looking directly at it. So that's and then you'll find uh, that's your us presenters there, there as well. That's us. A little bit more hair there. Yeah, it's, it's um. So well. that is to scale. That I'm about I'm about that much shorter than Jake. Um, yeah. So you can see, obviously, that the that the line's going to need to go up. Now the height of that is going is going to be a uh, 
something you need to consider in terms of the power of the machine, that kind of thing. It needs to come up from the machines, and obviously it's pull, pulling against gravity at that point. So you don't want to send it too far into the sky, I assume. You don't want to put it into your ceiling space necessarily, unless you've got a larger machine that can cope with that, that updraft. No, and if you uh, find that your bandsaw is slightly, probably one-eighth of a Jeffrey taller than this Jeffrey, uh, you don't need to go all the way to the roof. You can just go straight up to the top of your machine and run it along the wall yep. as well. Yes, but studio you won't be able to access the blast gates. Exactly. So if you do go too high, again, we'll get into blast gates in a minute. Uh, if you do go too high, it's much harder to reach when you need to shut off a valve so that you can increase static pressure to a particular machine. But we'll get into that in a second. All right. All that information will be on our part two of the blog that we've put up on the website. There'll be links to it below. There'll be links to it on across all of our social media accounts. Uh, yeah, we're just talking about uh, step two today. Uh, make sure that you read the first part of the blog as well to get a basic understanding of what we're, what we're trying to achieve here today. Okay, so you've got your... <coughs> I mean, dust extraction is basically like a big vacuum cleaner, right? Mm. That's, you know... It sucks air into itself mm -hmm. and then filters that air. Yeah. If you're only using one machine at a time, mm -hmm. which Alex probably is in a small, uh, you know, working by themselves in a small workshop, you don't need to be sucking the air from all the machines all the time, right? Yeah. So what's the solution? Well, the solution is either PVC piping, which we're not going to get into because, again, it's quite a different science involved. Um, the other option is flexi hose, or obviously flexi hose, but also the addition of blast gates. Oop. Now, some of oh. our customers, some enthusiasts, may not even know what a blast gate is. It is essentially just a shut off valve. So you can get these in different sizes, from say 100 mil down to 50 mil. Uh, if you do have combination machines, for example, our router table today will be taking a two and a half inch or 63 millimeter hose, uh, but the main line that will be running, the main line that will be running will be four inches or 102 millimeters when we're not talking about, when we're not talking about imperial measurement, which we hate doing around here. So, so these really are, these are my favorite, these are my favorite things, as you can probably tell. Yeah. These are the secret to, to making an efficient system, because what they do is, when you're not using the machine that this particular blast gate's connected to, you close it off like that, it seals off that part of the hose and it directs all the suction to the other machine. Without, the, without blast gates in the system, you're just constantly extracting from every machine all the time and you're only getting a fraction, say half or one third or whatever of the, of the suck uh, to whatever machine you're using at the time. Um, sometimes that's not a big major problem, but I think most of the time, uh, with multiple machines on a fixed system like that, you're going to want blast gates. Agreed. Plus they're fun, they're just so much fun. They're fun to muck around. I like them. Yeah. Uh, a couple of the other fittings that we'll be using today are Y connectors. Why? So... Sorry. So Y connectors, uh, obviously you've got your offshoot from your main line. So obviously if we were using one of these, we'll be around that way if we're going that way. Yeah, so this is this, this one here? You would have your main line run up 100 mil. Oops. Lock that in. I got it. Do it. Yeah. There we go. So you would have your main line 100 millimeters, and then you'd want a 100 millimeter line down off of here as well. So the way that airflow works, if you were to just have a T junction, essentially the airflow is heading straight up and it's dissipating or losing its momentum. So that this this bandsaw's got a 100 millimeter duct on it, a uh, port on it, right? That's correct. Okay. So that's going to be 100 all the way down to there. That's right. Yep. So instead of just having a T-junction where the airflow is going to go up and essentially dissipate and lose all its momentum, it's at a slight offshoot. So just like the water that comes out of your hose, uh, if it has to change sharp direction, it's going to lose momentum. You're going to lose drawing power. Yep. So essentially this will just sit up there. You'll have your main line run through there and that will continue that main line through to your connector. And then that will have another separate hose of 100 mil come down. Um, which would attach to a blast gate, so that if you're not using your or if Alex isn't using his bandsaw, you can shut that off and have all of his drawing power focused on the machine that he's using. Yes, questions? Why is it on an angle? I just explained that. Oh, did you? I did, yeah. yeah. So for the, uh, the viewers that have just ducked off to get a cuppa, or because it's such a lovely day in Melbourne, their first glass jar of the day, 
it's, it's, off lock, on a, it's locked down. You may as well start drinking. And it's off on a slight angle because, morning. again, the same with water through your hose, uh, airflow through your dust extraction system. Uh, it needs to maintain momentum so that your drawing power stays efficient. So if it just hits a T-junction, the drawing power dissipates and loses momentum, so it comes off. You get turbulence in there, right? You get turbulence. It's, tu yeah. Yeah. it's, it's all this uh, airflow mumbo-jumbo, yeah? Yeah. So we're trying to make a little bit more approachable to the everyman at the moment, so. I like mumbo-jumbo. Yeah? Yeah. You look like the kind of guy that likes mumbo-jumbo. Um, what, yeah, anyway, yeah, anyway. <laughs> no comment. So Can this one here, mumbo -jumbo? Not, yeah, that's that's uh, that's jumbo mumbo. Um, not to speak ill of Western mumbo. -jumbo. So this one here, I'm going to stay with the metric system, but one of the ways that we uh, w that we describe the, the the ducting and all the parts and everything is actually imperial, and it kind of makes a bit more sense because it's four inch, three inch, two and a half inch, that kind of stuff. So one of the few times I will, you know, stoop to the level of using the imperial system. But this, so this one is what 63, which is two and a half inch. Approximately. Okay. So is that you. A three? <laughs> I'm trying to. Could we uh, let's just take a quick brief. Come brief, on. Brief, a brief, a brief oh intermission. Oh my. We, yeah, we have to apologise. Jeff's from New Zealand, so there we go. Get better. All right. Yeah, that's, so, a, that's a metric three. Okay. So you could, in theory, in theory, you could convert it to 63 millimeter here. And have 63 millimeter all the way to there, or you could convert it here to 63 from 100, or you can convert it there. The, the so best idea, I think, is to keep it 100 millimeter all the way as far as you can, because for every meter of ducting, there's X amount of resistance in the system, which reduces your suck, reduces your pressure. Sorry. Yeah. For 100. <laughs> I said the word suck. I, d I don't know why that's funny. Uh, um, moving, moving along, has a metric suck as well. If it's if it's a bigger if it's a bigger pipe, you need a lot more suck. No, if it's so. Look, put, I'll illustrate with this. So, this much of a hundred mil is going to resist the airflow a lot less than this much in sixty-three mil, right? So you want as little as possible of that and as much as possible of that. To get the most airflow at at the blast gate at the at the machine. With our design as well, we need to take into account that Alex is going to add an additional machine uh, at a later date. So ah. having to connect another section of 100 mil hose just means that that's much more simple, much simpler, much simpler. Simplerisation is the terrain. proper metric yeah. uh, English language. Yeah. 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 Um, if it were to be just. Yeah. If, he, if Alex decides to eliminate that table saw, then it is just as simple as at the end of this line, just couple in your 63 mil hose connector. Yep. We also had this, <laughs> I like blast gates. We had this cool blast gate, has 100 mil on one side, 63 on the other. So you can do the conversion and the blast gating in the one device, which is pretty cool. Um, I think that makes sense for rather fittings at least. I think yes. one thing that we should talk about is calculating your CFM. So CFM refers to yeah. cubic feet per minute, which is essentially the drawing power that your extractor has. Now, there are a lot of uh, factors that go into this, into what's required. Certain machines will require X amount. Uh, you will lose CFM based off of what material you're using, whether it's PVC or flexi hose. You'll lose drawing power off distance. Uh, and diameter of pipe. So these are all factors that you need to take into consideration. We have a table that we've sort of put together. Uh, it will be in the blog. I believe it's on the website. It's already in the blog. It's already yep. in the blog. So it's more of a template. Uh, again, it's it's very, um, it can be quite complicated, but uh, as long as you keep it simple, then the table itself will make a lot more sense. So, so the general principle is a given extracting machine, so our dust extractor here, is going to be able to pull X amount of cubic feet per minute, basically. And the, uh, the golden rule yep. would be that it's always better to have too much than not enough. So right. make sure that if you think you only need 600, it's probably a better idea to go for at least nine or a thousand CFM because again, radiating factors will determine that you lose CFM based on those factors. Right. So what are you gonna get out of all of our, our, our uh, um, you know, verbiage, our, 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 our verbal uh, diarrhea, so to speak, is that our word salad. we haven't even started building this thing and we've, and we've covered over so much ground. Yep. You need to do the same thing. 
anyone who's putting together a dust extraction system needs to plan, plan, plan. Yep. That's the crucial thing. Have a really good idea about the overall vision for, um, for, for what it's going to look like before you even start you know, buying things to put things together. Yep. And future-proof it, like you said. So if you're thinking later on that oh, I'm going to buy a I'm going to buy a table saw, from, you know, uh, next year or whatever. I'm going to I'm going to add this machine, or even if you can take something away, calculate that into your your plan and for the for the dust extraction system, future proof your system. That's right. Now the one thing we haven't mentioned, uh, or we just brief, briefly mentioned it. Can we swing swing that back around again? I just don't know how that works. Um, is our combination machine. So one thing that you can do with dust extraction is you can pretty much do what Alex has been doing with this, whoop, with this combo machine, is that you can have a sort of a temporary, if you like, removable solution. So the combination machine, which is hiding back there, and we're going to move it around in a minute. We'll bring that out in a second. Is a mobile thing. Alex has to move it because it's a jointer mm -hmm. and it's a thicknesser. And if you're doing long boards, Alex actually opens the roller door <laughs> because to put the board through, you physically need that space. So that's a machine that lives here, that's why it's got a little arrow there. It lives against the wall, gets moved out when Alex needs to use it. Yeah, when you've got to bring the uh, Daewoo Lanos back into the garage, it's easy to just push the machine out of the way so that you can do that as well. Correct. So when you bring it, bring it into its working position, then you attach uh, your ducting. So Alex has one of these, it's got a hose clip on there already to go, and the adapter or the, the fitting that's going to fit it onto the machine. And then this gets put into storage, you know, Put, put it underneath the machine or whatever when you're put it, putting it away. That's right. That's a valid um, approach. So it's an important part of the plan. Yeah. And the last part of the plan that we haven't talked about before we actually start building this thing is the extractor itself. So right. Alex has a fairly small single car garage set up with three machines. Uh, the extractor that we've chosen today is our uh, Sherwood's FN300. So it's a two horsepower unit. Um, in my opinion, it is probably the bedrock uh, dust extraction system for this size workshop, for the amount of machinery and dust that's going to be created, um, and we'll bring that in in a minute as well. But it has a CFM rating, I believe it's 1200. Um, I'm not too sure off the top of my head, but again, that's something that you'll have to factor into when you're designing your workshop dust extraction system, is what unit you need, uh, how much drawing power it has in capacity, uh, and its footprint as well. You've got quite a small, small workshop. So the yep. FM300 itself, Small footprint, decent amount of power, uh, very portable as well. So that's the one that we've chosen today. All right, so what are we going to do? We're going to have a play and build this thing, or? Let's. Yeah. So Jake's a lot more practical than I am. You can probably tell. Yeah. Uh, so um, I'm going to let you take the lead. Sure. And, I don't uh, like talking. I know it seems <laughs> like I do. Uh, but I really, I, I write, please no, no studio audience participation at this time. <laughs> Um, so let's Stay get there. cracking because yeah, Alright, well let's I, get this let's, let's get, get that out of the way. way. Okay, so we've got we don't want to ruin our line, so if you pick up that edge for me, we'll just We've got this beautiful um, sawdust that was lovingly put on the floor earlier. Uh, to to illustrate the walls of this thing, right? So that's it's not very big. So you can imagine your single car fitting straight in here. It's quite cramped, so you need to be able to uh, increase your portability and get your extraction line off the floor so right. it's not getting run over every time you bring the Kluger in, yeah? So. Yeah, and so here's our combination machine. And you can see how portable this actually is, which is pretty cool. Whoa. This is all, this is all part of the machine. It's not an extra mobility kit. So that would live, whoop, sort of in there somewhere, right? That's our temporary. That gets moved out to the space. So that's that one. Point. Yeah. Um, and then we have our FM300 over here. So we'll bring this over. Jeff, again, if you could help me lift this. You really don't, uh, not keen on. Uh, I just don't want to ruin all my dusty hands. That's the best place so to lift it from. There. I'm just going to pop that right there. Okay. All right. So that's where our dust extractor is going to be. Another thing that I actually forgot to mention, or rather, we forgot to mention, when you're doing your plan, <laughs> you also need to take into account where your, or your, at least your electrical requirements. Uh, yeah. So if you do have a machine that runs off 15 amp power, you need to make sure that you've got your plan, your layout, where that machine's gonna go before you call a licensed, and I'll emphasize licensed electrician to come out and take a look at your garage. Yeah. 
I don't want so, any of these cowboys. I don't want your, yeah. your, your dad's uncle's best mate coming out and pulling sheets off a wall. To, but they'll do it for a crate. So it's there's not, that. It's not, well, by you know. crate, he's referring to a case or a slab. Oh, Again, sorry. we apologise. He's sorry. from New Zealand. So, yeah, he will do it for a crate, <laughs> which is not what you want when you're talking about electrical. No, don't um, get a Kiwi to do it, I think is the point. Exactly. Um, yeah, uh, no, do thing, always get someone ticketed, please. One thing we want to emphasise as well with this FM300 is that it comes standard with this Y connector. Can I get a close-up of, uh, of this extractor, please? So, it's a 125mm port. It comes with a Y connector that goes down to 202mm ports. It also comes standard with a cap. So, once, if you are running your main line and you're not running it to the, or if Alex rather is running Alex. his main line and he's um, he or she, Alex, he or she, they are running it to their jointer slash thicknesser, they can cap it off and not worry about losing any drawing power. Now it's an important step to take, especially if you're using multiple machines yep. uh, in a small work, small environment. So. so it's just like having a blast gate there basically, isn't it? It's, it's, a, yeah. it's a blast gate on the thing. And the advantage of that line that Jeffrey Jeffrey Dobe pulled out before is that it will probably almost certainly be a little bit longer than this but that just means that you can put some hangers on the wall, hang it straight up when it's not in use and again it's off the floor, you don't have to worry about driving over it. Nope. Now I would probably put that like that but I might have to swivel it around to get the car in just so I can get the ducting there. What do you think? Because the ducting here is kind of on the back of the machine a bit. Or do we swivel it right round? But then the pl then the, the power port the, the switch is on this side and the ducting's on that side. So that's something something you have to think about a little bit just to get it organised. Yep. So let's let's sort of let's just lay it out. Here's our that's gracious. That's noisy. So here's our bandsaw. It's going to be roughly roughly here. Da -da. Should we bother moving that? I think we should at least. Try oh, that. okay, right. Well. <coughs> we'll, slide it in. we'll slide it in then, All right. twist it around, so, we just twist that around, That's, or Which way? the other way, how about we go, Which way? that way, ah. yeah, because that's how we'd operate it, yeah, yeah, so that's well, it's very close to the wall now, so, yeah, so you, yeah. you want it close to the wall so that you, oh. can, get the, you can get the arrows in, yeah, ah, the duck, <laughs> The ducting is here, the, the port is here the and is down there, the bottom. Yeah. So if you're not familiar with them, most machines will have dust extraction ports. Uh, smaller band saws will probably only have one. Large band saws like this one obviously has two. Ah, uh, okay. Normally so we're going to have to think because, about it. Yeah, normally because these machines are usually with the increased capacity are usually spitting out more material. That's why they would have more dust ports. So just make sure that you factor that in as well because you can, at the same time, utilize another Y connector and have it extracting machine probably three quarters efficiently. I wouldn't say it drops it in half. No. But because it's pulling it from two separate points, anything that doesn't get sucked up through this port will get pulled out of that one. So Yeah. Um, and so at an, at an absolute pinch you could probably just put a cap on one of them if you absolutely had to. But the it's important I think for most machines to use the dust extraction that's that's off, on offer if you like. This one's got two so when, you, when you're connecting your, your ducting try and use both of them if you possibly can. It's designed that way. What you find, especially with the bandsaw, um, is that the dust will collect inside the cavity and you won't see it happening um, if your extraction is not, not up to the task if you've only collected it to one. The wheel's going round, it's got dust in it, there's dust in the, between, the, between the blade and the tyre all that kind of stuff. It's not a it's not a happy situation. So, try and use as much of the duct uh, ports and things like that that are on offer. Um, so, if your machine has two, use them both. If it's got fifteen, use all fifteen. I don't know if I've never met one that's got fifteen. But there you go. It's not again. We'll reiterate because uh, it is one of the things that is often overlooked most in uh, in workshops is the dust extraction. It's not just pulling uh, the material out of your machine that's making it last longer. Um, and run more efficiently over a longer course of time. It's also keeping it out of your lungs, which True. means that you'll be in here more often and for yep. a longer period. Um, and it's also keeping it out of the rest of the house, which means that your partner or housemates will despise you less. Yep. Especially if you're living in a share house. Especially if you're living in a share house that's worth its weight in gold. 
as I've uh, experienced myself. Yeah. Anyway. If you value if you value marital harmony, uh, also. If you don't, no problem. But if you do, should we move this uh, router table in here as well? Because I think this illustrates this illustrates the point again that I was just making. Can you keep it close to the wall, please? This oh. is part of the wall. All right. All right. We also have our own marital issues. Yeah. So. Which you'll be exposed to today. The router table has two, again, two locations for extraction. Um, it's got, well, most of them will tend to have uh, a port up here. So that catches the material as it's coming straight off the bit above the, t above the, um, the plate, above the table. Um, and then underneath this box here, you can see that, um, your router obviously uh, motor is going to be in this area. And at the back there's a, it's like a three inch to me. Is it three inch or four inch? I'm never quite sure. Um, and that actually has a tap as well. Yeah, so that's actually got two it's got a, I can't really see it, but it's a four inch um, port and then a two and a half on top of it as well. So it's actually kind of got three, although you'd be, you'd, um, be within your rights to cap off the smaller one down the bottom. Um, some people will connect that to the, um, to the fence and just have them one main four, four um, inch. Some people will have this coming off a separate tap. It's six of one, half a dozen of the other. Um, as long as you don't have any open lines, that's the main thing. So Jake's already getting going, which is nice. See, so he's the action. Oh, he's, like he's a man of action. He's a man of action. I'm a man of leisure myself. Um, all right, so. Great. Now, hang on a minute. These, these look too short. Yeah. That's all a matter of perspective, though, isn't it? I haven't heard that before in my life. <laughs> Muscles. So, but but wait, it's actually really quite long. So that's the advantage of flexible hose. Yeah, right. So, how how long is that? Two meters when it's fully extended. Um, it's quite fun. Yeah. It's quite fun stuff, actually. I oh, yeah. all right. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So, right. Uh, so, If we could go straight over to our uh, setup here, we've got it flat on the floor, so it's easy. So we, right. for a simulated environment, we've yep. got a main line coming off the extractor itself, an elbow that will protrude above the uh, extractor that will chase for the rest or the remaining length of the room. Yep. One set of hose to your connector, which will offshoot down to. Are you guys getting a shot of this? Yep. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, that will offshoot down to your. Uh, bandsaw with a blast gate attached so that you can uh, obviously shut it if you need to when you're not using a bandsaw. Um, ideally you would have this closer to the junction as possible because that just means that there's not another two to three meters of uh, extraction being wasted. Uh, but again if you've got it on a roof or you've got it high up on the wall it's a little bit harder to reach it. So just slapping that on at least somewhere where you can reach it makes it much more advantageous. Okay. Um, the Y junction is continuing, obviously off to another Y junction with a 100 mil port that we can cap for now until Alex decides later to make the addition of another right. machine. Okay, so... That off branches to a 63 mil hose for the router table. Now, the router table's actually got a four inch port down the bottom. At the, at, at the back as well. Does it? So you could, yeah, it does. <laughs> it doesn't have to, but this one does. This one, this one does. So some people will just run a router table without the box underneath. Yep. Um, but it's, it's sensible to have the box. Yep. So that would make sense that if you were to have, right. say, uh, one of these Y junctions set up on the roof, then you would have a four inch hose run down, sorry, yep. 102 millimeter hose run down. And then that let's would Let's keep just, it metric, baby. Let's keep it metric. And then that would essentially sit like so. Yep. You would have that run off to the top of the table and that run off to the bottom of the table. And then if you were to slap a... If you hold that. Yep. Four-inch blast gate on top. So when you're using your radar site, or when you're using a bandsaw, you can just shut that off and you're good to go. Yep. So um, I think this illustrates quite, quite strongly the point of that you need to plan this stuff out. If, um, if you went to TimberCon and you just kind of went, I think I need 
one of these, five of those, some of these, some of those, and you're kind of doing it on the fly. You'll find yourself quite frustrated quite quickly. You'll get home and you'll be like, ah, oh, I'm missing a thing and a bit and I need this thing and I forgot that one and it's, this is too short, that's too long, whatever. So draw it out and plan it as much as you possibly, possibly can. It's very similar to when you are doing repetitive work uh, and you might spend, say, two to three hours setting up jigs or templates and then maybe only 15 minutes cool cutting. Hi guys, what are you doing? We are setting up a dust extraction uh, setup. Fantastic. You want to come over and do mine next? Would you like to? <laughs> you could help us out. If and then we get some kind of reciprocity going, as opposed to you just oh, bumming off us. Yeah. Helping. Yeah. Phil, can you get I off think, the set? The, uh, I think there's a, like an email. Where's the? So there's a Kiwi and Australian Canadian walk into a bar. Ouch. Oh. All right. So okay, so. I don't know what, there's no punchline, I just I was, thought that would be funny, yeah, you know, was, yeah. yeah, anyway. yeah of course. All right, so, so that's, that sort of covers over pretty much, I mean, once you get to this point, it's just a matter of just... Hanging it. Hanging it, yeah, building it. Exactly. Running it along the floor, or, if, you know, if putting it up in the ceiling. Um, if you're putting it on the ceiling, you need brackets yep. to sort of stick it up there. Yep, you can um, build shelves as well. You can build shelves. Give you a so inclined. Yep. Um, that's all I could really think of, to, to hold up your flexi hose. But yeah. One question that we often get asked, I'll just mention this before we go to a break and uh, have, a, have a beer and a cup of mezcal or whatever, um, is the noise, the noise of a dust extraction setup. Um, and so I thought I'd just, sorry, I'm getting waved at by some lunatic Shoot, member of the public. I don't, yeah, so, Timcon Melbourne shop today, so. But I thought I'd just turn it on. So this is, my, this is not my normal speaking voice. I'm speaking a bit more loudly for the benefit of the cameras. Hello. Um, but I, this is the FM300, and this is how noisy it is. So it's really, it's kind of noisy, but it's not, not really bad. Can you hear me now? I'll come right up here and you can hear me. It's nowhere near as noisy as the machines that you're going to plug it into. Yeah, you're adding a little bit of noise. Um, but the, the, the benefit of having a good dust extractor on your lungs, on the, your safety in your workshop and the efficiency of your machining is way, way offsets the potential uh, annoyance to your neighbours. Um, what? Just, just, just give your neighbours a bottle of wine at Christmas and they'll be fine, yeah, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so are we going to go and have a break, like you reckon? Yeah. yeah. Uh, nice one thing coffee. I will touch on just before we have a break. Yeah. What? Um, is what we'll do. Jeff's just far too eager for a glass jar or a cup of mezcal or whatever. I'm you parched. Drink. I'm parched. Yeah. yeah, you drink water too. Yeah. Um, is obviously with aforementioned uh, cap end. Ah yes. Can you, if you would be so inclined, to wheel this back into the middle of the workshop? Oh, so one thing I failed uh, in my driving test was um, the steering part. Fairly, uh, yeah, it's a basic part of it. Kind of fundamental part yeah. of aspect of driving a motor vehicle. I had to, I had to leave the country. Is that about right? Sounds like something a New Zealand person would do. Yeah. <laughs> Pop the cap off, take your main line out, and then you're going to just chuck that bad boy on there. Right. And obviously this hose would normally be a little bit longer, it would reach through to your uh, joint and thickness accommodation machine. So yep. This affords Alex the opportunity to dress down long pieces of material uh, whilst maintaining a small footprint. So the key advantage of a combination machine. And so uh, the combination machine, the, the port is four inch and when you, when you combo it, when you flip it up, yep. you fold over the... You fold over the um, the manifold, I guess you would call it. Um, the dust extraction doohickey here. It's my beautiful assistant will now demonstrate. There you go. So, so you don't. It doesn't have two port. Doesn't have two separate outlets. So, um, that's kind of a good solution for a small for a small workshop. Um, and it's easy to move. Like I moved it, and I'm not a big uh, person. Don't, uh, let the flanny, don't let the flanny, loose flanny fool you. Jeff is uh, quite the Adonis. I've seen him lift small cars with ease. You've also lifted my heart sometimes. Oh, <coughs> I think we should. Uh, well, we really should go to a, a break now. And I'm getting, I'm, I'm, I'm getting embarrassed. I've oh, got questions. Well. All right, we've got questions. So, I know you're keen for. A <laughs>
know you clean. Oh, no, I just don't know what time it is. Okay, so we've got a question. Yes. Oh, yeah. <coughs> um, oh, so what's the guy's name? i got a Snapchat. James K. Yo, K. Yo. Hey, James. Is asking, um, he's just building his system. He's using PVC pipe. Yep. I'm assuming it's white PVC plumbing pipe. Yep. What's the best way to connect those doobers there to PVC pipe? Well, hopefully uh, the fittings are relatively uniform, but we do have a couple of uh, options that we sell here at Singapore. Yep. You have your plastic connections. So these are all rated off of rated. These are all dimensioned to 102 mm mil capacity fittings. Uh, we also have the flex cuff as well. I like these. Which gives you a little more. They look cool. They're, they're flexible rubber. I think they're actually kind of a plumbing fitting, aren't they? Um, but And they've got two hose clips here. Um, they will stretch over um, if you get a fitting that's kind of a weird non-standard size or you're trying to do something. Um, so that's, and it makes a nice seal. You can tighten that right up. Yep. Um, so, In which like, case, uh, yeah. we're out of these fittings, which we kind of are at the moment. Are we? It's quite difficult to get a hold of some of these. Uh, a temporary solution is definitely just gaffer tape. So just get some duct tape, um, try to keep it in a relatively uniform position, and then just wrap it. Yeah. And, and I mean, dust extraction fittings are, there's a kind of a standard, but it's a nominal standard. So four inch, three inch, whatever. Um, they may refer to the internal biometer, yeah. they may refer to the external biometer as well. So, you know, I had an old bandsaw that had some weird um, port on it that I just could not find a fitting. It was like, you know, two and three eighths or something. Um, and I think I just ended up using um, bicycle inner tube to wrap it round to connect it. So anything that'll stick it, um, physically stick it and seal it is fine. We had someone ask about the isotune. Oh, really? Just um, let them know, people know, yeah. that these things are selling out. So if, you want, if you're into them, they're selling We're out already. We're doing a bit of uh, shameless selling now. <laughs> yeah. I um, actually have these ones. Do you? They're at very home. orange. They're almost as orange as the hair that grows off my face. Yeah, but see, they're on my head and I can't see that, so it doesn't bother me. What are they? To start with? Yeah, so they're. <laughs> what are they? So. Well, at least, yeah. I have this friend, uh, so it's a bit of a digression, but I think this will illustrate the point quite well. I have this friend who may be watching today who um, worked at the Refuge Transfer Centre in, um, in Hamilton, New Zealand, uh, recycling copper. And it's a noisy job and stuff. He found one day, apparently in the dump, a, some headphones that he could wear, and they had a radio in them. And he would listen to the radio all day. And he would always, I would always catch up with him after work and, we're, and, and he'd say, oh, did you hear that interview today on national radio with the, you know, the, the, the Zambian foreign minister or whatever? And I'd be like, no. And he'd be like, well, I'm, I was listening to it. Anyway, these are the, these are them. These are the headphones with the radio attached. These are those. Even. These are those. Yeah. But they've got Bluetooth. Okay. So you can have your phone in your pocket. You connect your phone to your headphones. They have got active noise cancelling technology, so they'll... They'll reduce, it's 25 decibel rated, so they reduce the noise anyway beyond the passive um, noise protection that they give you. And you can listen to your music, you can listen to a podcast, you can make a phone call, you can call somebody while you're, while you're working. Um, I love them. I just I have them on all the time, even when I'm not machining, because I'm listening to music. Um, so. so the gist of that, that uh, <laughs> egregious, egregious story oh, that Jeffrey was nice just, story. just told us they are just earmuffs, really good earmuffs, <laughs> good quality earmuffs that play music or podcasts. Uh, the difference between these two, this set that I have in my hands, I also have a set uh, of these. Oh, um, you've got the green ones. This one features Aware technology from Isotunes. Um, aware technology is essentially small microphones they place into the earmuffs so that you pick up uh, conversation, well, pretty ah, much just okay. conversation. So people speaking around you, um, you can hear them with, uh, whilst still eliminating the high pitch or even the low grunt of machine noise. Um, so it's actually filtering out what you want to hear from what you don't want to hear. Exactly. Right. So uh, as I've already used at my house, you can literally <laughs> turn people's speaking voice down. Oh. Uh, you have no idea how cathartic that exercise is. Um, you live with your mother, just, don't you? So, uh, yeah, let's yeah, not get into that. That's, uh, COVID, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, 
So they are flying off the shelves. Uh, they're a great product. Um, I've been fortunate enough to pick up a pair myself. Um, I used to dress a lot of timber for my full-time job. There were long periods, long days where I was doing nothing but repetitious, annoying, loud noise uh, producing work. Uh, these were an absolute lifesaver. I got through three years of that job where I would have probably would have lasted about six months without them. How yes. many calls from your mum would have you missed during that time? Well. Well, I could check my phone log, but I'm not I, going to. Can I just can I just point out as well, it's not just earmuff ones. They've got, also got the in-ear earbud style Correct. in various different f configurations. Yep. Um, so they have all the same you features. So your, uh, your yeah. audio protection. Yep. Um, Isotunes have a method for everybody. I, and I actually find them, I find them very com uh, comfortable. Most earmuffs, I don't like them because my glasses, they push push my ears against my glasses and hurt me hurt my ears. So These ones are nice and soft and they don't do that, so yes, it's audience. good. Someone just asked, what, what brand are they? Oh, Isotunes is, yeah. the, is the name of the brand. And, the, and these ones are Link and those ones are Aware. So Isotunes is the name of the company. Um, American Why company, I believe. So, yeah, again, American cha company? Cha chain or sales uh, input here. The brand is Isotunes. Um, again, they're flying off the shelf, so make sure you check them out. So it's Carmel I-N, is that Indiana? I-N? Is the state in America that it come from? Yeah, so they're an American yeah. company. Yeah. yeah. Right, so, gentlemen, you're running yeah. out of ideas. So running out of ideas. Why don't we? Why don't we tell them what, we're going to have a break? So tell yep. them what's coming up next. All right. So yeah, we're about to uh, take a break. Um, if you want to go get a glass jar, or you want to uh, punch a dart, or uh, go do some uh, <laughs> punch a dart, punch a dart, go do some shopping real quick. Uh, feel free. We're going to take 15 minutes to gather our thoughts and reflect on what we're doing here with our, in this stage of our life. And then when we come back, we're going to be talking about IVAC. Yes. So this is the basic level, straightforward, dust extraction, sucky sucky um, system. <laughs> what? Um, it sucks the dust. It removes the dust. Removes the dust. Yep. There's another level of, of automation that you can add to your system. Yes. And it will save you, which is a bit of a shame because I like playing with these, but it will save you having to remember to, to open and close your blast gates, turn on your machines, blah, 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 blah. So we'll talk about that when we come back. You are a bit of a fiddler though, so that makes a lot of sense. Uh, yes, you, you, you will. have a little bit of time. You can yeah. talk about, like maybe talk about the cyclones a little bit. Yeah, we'll talk about some stuff. It's okay. Yeah, that's um, pretty good. We've got a question from James again. Yeah, Jim. He's asking about the CFM drop. Um, how much CFM drop do you like? Ah, that's a good question, and I don't know because it depends on the cyclone. The Sherwood ones um, are more liberal, so they don't give you so much of a CFM drop. I don't know what the numbers are. Um, once, you, uh, once you move into cyclone separation, you really start having to take into account static pressure. Um, there's a lot of science behind it that we're trying ourselves over or for the last couple of months and into the next couple of weeks make that a lot more accessible and easy to understand. Yep. Um, if you're looking to put into a cyclone dust extractor unit with the FM300, you, I would ballpark you're probably going to lose about a third to maybe half, but it'll still keep the static pressure relatively high. So I've been quite surprised at how much drawing power the combination machines maintain. Um, it's quite impressive. So Can you pull that machine if, that you're talking about, Jack? If, um, if Jack? you... Yeah. Um, I was going to say, if you connect a dust deputy, uh, which is the other cyclone that we offer, you, you have a massive uh, drop in CFM. But it's not because of the cyclone, it's because of the port size change, or the ducting size change. So you go down to like a two inch, I think, or two and a half inch, straight away you lose your, your thing there. So, but with these ones, they're, they're four inch all the way, so... Yeah. What James is asking um, about, if anybody's unfamiliar with what a cyclone separator is, it is essentially a separate unit that separates the large particles from the small ones. So it's very similar to the Oneida separation for a shop vac. Um, essentially what you do is you will attach your dust extractor into the top port here and then attach your machine that you're extracting from into the wire connector. And what that does is pull the airflow through the centrifuge through your machine. All the large particles will dump into the bin and all the finer particles will be extracted out of the machine. Now why right. would you need that? Um, it essentially just comes down to if you are using a couple of machines with varying sizes of particles, it's much easier to just empty out 
and it's a lot cleaner, a lot less hazardous to your health to be able to just pull a tub of large chips out. Depending on the timber that you're using, you can dump that on the garden for mulch, you can put it in your chook pen, or you can put it straight in the, the uh, compost. Uh, whereas all the harmful sort of dust particles are getting put into a bag that you can just chuck in the bin. So this is the sucky bit here. That's sucking upwards. And then this, this is where the, the material's coming in to this angle here. The, the input duct is off center. So as it comes, as the air comes in, it goes around, 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 like a cyclone, like an actual cyclone. And it's not just a name so. Right. Do so cyclones in New Zealand? We do actually have... have um, I thought you had hurricanes. No, cyclones, yeah, yeah. tropical cyclones. They come oh, down from Fiji and... Gotcha. Don't go camping when there's a tropical hurricanes cyclone. Hurricanes in the Northern yeah, Hemisphere. Yeah, Too so. many uh, tectonic plates down in New Zealand, yeah. clearly, yeah. Um, <laughs> and, so, and so as it's spinning around, the centrifugal force forces the particles out against the wall. And as, when they hit the wall, they suddenly lose their momentum. They're not being pushed by the air anymore, and they'll fall. Um, there's something scientifically uh, interesting about the fact that uh, it's tapered, and the size and the, the length of the taper is really important to do with the, the CFM and all this kind of stuff. So and the girth of the centrifuge as well. The girth is important. Um, uh, and uh, so, but basically, all the crap is going to fall through here. And through the magic of science, there's no filter or anything in here. There's no valve. There's nothing. It's just a hole, but the solid material goes down into the bucket and the clean air, and that is nothing, it's just nothing. So the clean air goes back up through the middle of the cyclone, which is a low pressure so area, sort of I assume. The, and then, out the and then up, up this way. So, so it's very, very simple, but it's deceptively complicated, if you know what I mean. It uh, makes emptying out your dust extractor much quicker, faster, and it is a lot less hazardous to your health. What he said. Got one of those needle filter bags, when you smack it after a while, all those particles that are very hazardous to your health just seem yep. to puff out. So that's the yep. idea of the separation. Yes, audience. Nice segue to James' next question, yes, which James. is, um, is there a drop in CFM when you apply a pleated filter? No. So James has asked a question about a pleated filter cartridge, which is another additional extra, which I will grab now. I'm the, glad uh, it's, I'm glad I've got Jake because I w you know this is a lot of lifting in this uh, in this segment. Fortunately, these are very light because I'm not quite the man I used to be. Oh, okay. This is comedic size uh, pleated filter cartridge. Uh, it is essentially just a drum with some ribbed. I'm not sure what materials inside of it. It's kind of like a papery sort of not paper but sort filter of paper. yeah filter, filter paper, paper stuff yeah. yeah exactly filter paper. <laughs> uh, it's this filter is made out of filter. It's designed to catch microns of dust particles all the way down to a single micron, which is a thousandth of a millimetre? 0 0.01 of a millimetre. 0 0.01 of a millimetre. So all that sort of dust that you find floating around, point zero zero dropping, onto the, dropping onto your floor or, onto your, or seeping into your kitchen floor overnight, uh, that's floating around in the air, this is supposed to catch all of that, or at least particles down to that size. So one that we sell, that goes, you can upgrade your FM300 to collect, uh, is half its length, uh, which is a little more practical. Um, so in terms no, of the CFM drop... There is no CFM drop. No, because that because of the pleatedness of it. Mm -hmm. There's a, the, yeah. the, the surface area of this uh, filter is much more than the circumference times the height. Because, because of the folds in there, it's sort of doubled, or I think even more than doubled. So, well, you're over time, you, you obviously re experience a reduction in CFM as the filter loads up. But initially, a clean needle filter at a certain size versus the equivalent pleated filter at that diameter and that height or whatever, um, there's no CFM difference as far as I'm... Um, it's also very easy to clean, as you can see. Oh, you missed that, what are you doing? Oh, it's also very easy to clean. <laughs> As you can see, it's got a wand, uh, which you would normally turn with the handle because it would be up much higher. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm just going to play with it like it's a yo-yo. So why, why is cleaning it important? Well, it will become caked up, as most filters do. If you've ever used a vacuum cleaner, you'll know your vacuum cleaner gets clogged up with dust. 
Yep. Um, it's important to You're, make sure um, that you maintain its cleanliness and your filtration. Mask gets clogged up with dust. You've just dated this video now. Now we can't use this outside of 2021, 22. They'll, they'll know. They'll remember. Yeah. They'll, I don't think anyone's going to forget the, yeah. the, the, the months scars. you spent wearing yeah. this thing. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So We're it's making important to keep it clean good. so that it keeps catching those particles. Otherwise, they... Keeps the Exactly. It, keeps, it helps to maintain its drawing power, or your extractor to maintain its drawing power as well. Yep. And so there's just a, a sort of a mechanical flappy rubber thing that goes around inside there. That's a very scientific name yeah. for it. Yeah, it's a flappy rubber. Yep. Um, and it just kind of whacks against the inside of the, of the um, thing. So Sherwood have some... That's... Look at that. Sherwood have some uh, machines that, are, that have the cyclone attached to them already. It's a combination machine. So you've got the extractor the cyclone all in one sort of convenient unit. There's a, there's sort of the cream of the crop or this kind of um, uh, fancy ones are the industrial level ones. They actually have a timer on, on the cleaner. So you don't even have to do that manually. It, it goes off, I think, when for half an hour bef after it's finished or something even, like that. Not even that, it operates constantly. Oh, does it? It does, yeah. Oh. So as, long, as soon as you turn the extractor on, the filter starts filtering itself, so. Yeah, so, it's, so the flappy rubber. The idea behind um, that is that automatic. obviously you're using that rubber. extractor for extended periods of time. So if you were yep. operating a small business and you need an extractor that's just going to operate the whole day, uh, no issues day in and day out, then you would probably need to invest in something like that. Yep. Um, after that, that's the most extensive industrial uh, level or grade extractor that Sherwood would sell. After that, you're really looking into industrial dust extraction, which is an entire different science. Uh, mm. But for the purposes of this video, we're just going to keep it simple. Just keep it to the single and double car garage, sort of. I was thinking maybe setup. an army of ants, and each ant yeah. takes one particle away. That would work. That would, yeah. that would also work, but it's expensive. You don't really want to Hard to train anymore. a lot of ants that, you know, yeah. um, they're always going on strike. Uh, dust extractor much more effective than an army of ants. I think that's the that's the that's the, the moral of the story today, isn't it? Don't don't bother with an army of ants. Go with a dust extractor. On that note, we're uh, we're going to let you all you guys all sit with that uh, little anecdote that Sorry. Jeffrey's whipped Sorry. out there it's about armies of ants. Um, punch a dart. Go have a glass jar. Look after the kids. We're going to have a fifteen minute break and we'll be back. Okay.
And so I was like, what the hell's that doing there? Oh, we're back. Um, did you know that? Did you know that Jake uh, once won a competition, a radio competition? Yeah. For the oh. deepest voice in Melbourne. That's right. I uh, haven't been challenged since. That was 2011. It's been That's 10 years. Deep, like I'm used to it now. Yeah. But what I realise, you know, when I'm going to be watching this back later on, and you know, showing my, my friends and my family three or four times a day, um, my voice is quite high in comparison. So. You have quite you, a resonant it? voice, though. Oh, so thanks. I wouldn't say it's high. The accent, that's the problem. Anyway, the the problem. sorry. We've got a if there are any there, challenges so out there to the throne, you know where to find me. Uh, I, I'm challenging yeah. you, yeah. Yeah, let's, <coughs> let's not get into no, uh, that, caricatures, yeah. all right? <laughs> all right, hopefully uh, nobody took my advice to go punch a dart because as a, as a asthmatic myself, I can't tolerate smokers. So. We spent all this time doing dust extraction for your health of yeah. your lungs, and then you're out there smoking. Yeah. Don't go do that. Don't do that. Anyway, um, hopefully you all enjoyed your break. We all did. We had a little bit of run around. Uh, we wanted to talk to you now about the IVAC system. So, as you saw, once we put all of our stuff together, um, you're essentially walking around, turning on your dust extractor, opening and closing all of your uh, blast gates to maximise your efficiency, maximise right. your drawing power. Uh, continue? Yeah, no, so, so, and I guess... You know, you talk about standing there for you know, ages machining. Some things that you do, you're moving between a mach a mach one machine to the next a as part of your process, right? So manually turning, uh, manually open opening blast gates and closing them again is adding another step every time you do that. Yeah. So you you um, so for example, when you are resawing, if you're taking slices off um, off a piece. Um, then you need to keep that square as you're going. So I often, I'm, I'm resawing, say, four mil slices off a big chunk. Um, and I need to joint that chunk every two or three, four slices. Um, if I'm running that across a jointer that's connected to the same system, I'm going to have to open the blast gate, I'm going to have to walk over there, I'm going to have to do this. Da, 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 da. It's a hassle, right? Yeah, it's a yeah. pain in the ass. Yeah. So, and occasionally you'll forget, oh, I've turned my machine on, I've started dressing stuff, I yeah. forgot to pull the blast gate open. You think so, about your date that you're having tonight, for example, you get distracted. Yeah, or... Looking forward to punching your dart. Looking forward to a glass jar and you're like, oh, right. I forgot to open up the blast gate or shut that other one off. Um, you've got to stop what you're doing, move over, open up the blast gate. It's a pain in the ass, especially if you're jumping from uh, machine to machine quite regularly. So, yep. IVAC have come up with a system that eliminates the necessity uh, for you to think, essentially. <laughs> you know, IVAX no, told thinking. you, essentially, you don't have to think about this anymore. We've eliminated this issue for you. Yep. Um, so it is essentially just an automated, bl automated blast gate system. Uh, it runs off a central sort of computer, uh, the little uh, magnetic switch controller there. Uh, you set up a blast gate and a sensor which detects when a current comes through the machine. Um, it opens up the blast gate of that machine, shuts all the other ones, and turns your extractor on. Once you are done using that machine, you would turn it off. It would, it would uh, draw for a little bit. A few, it's a, the off is delayed so that it clears the line. It will then shut the blast gate and then turn your extractor off. So, Okay, so it knows when I turn my machine on. Mm -hmm. So I walk up to my bandsaw, turn it on. Mm -hmm. The IVAC system automatically opens the correct blast gate, mm -hmm. closes all the other ones, mm -hmm. turns the ex uh, dust extraction on, mm -hmm. and then I do my bizzo, and then I turn off my bandsaw, the IVAC system detects that and turns off the extractor. So I literally don't have to do anything more than just turn on the bandsaw and turn it off again. That's right. That's it's amazing. just one less thing you have to think about. Yeah. So. Uh, there are a couple of different options available for the IVAC system. If you were, they do offer also a wireless remote control to turn off and turn on your dust extractor. So oh, yep. if you find that you're in a workshop where your dust extractor is located away from where you do most of your work and you don't want to have to keep walking back and forward, you can literally just pick up a remote, uh, wire up the magnetic switch to the controller, uh, and then you've just essentially got a wireless uh, remote control dust extractor. Right. And so what we've got here is a display board uh, that if you've ever come to the Melbourne shop uh, before, you've probably seen this or earlier versions of it. Um, and we play with it all the time because it's kind of fun. Um, so basically it just kind of illustrates the principle that uh, in the back here <laughs> that you can't see is all the wires and the bits and pieces that, that uh, are required to run it. But basically the 
um, the sensors are detecting the current through the mains line that's going to your machine, so your bandsaw. Yep. So there's no that's extra it. plug that you need to plug into that or anything like that. They clip around the mains power um, line and they just detect that current as, it, as, it, as you turn the machine on, the current starts to flow. The sensor detects that current and sends a signal uh, to the controller to open the blast gates and turn the extractor on and so on. If you find our uh, inarticulate and <laughs> possibly detail missing, or very likely detail missing explanation, uh, we do have extensive videos both on our web page for each IVAC item uh, and onto our YouTube page as well. So make sure we'll have all the links below as well. Yep. Um, enough talking, let's demonstrate. It's so, in play, so. Uh, essentially, you've got machine one and machine two. We'll just run off machine one today. Um, the green and red, obviously, on and off uh, is supposed to indicate the machine that you're running. So, say that's the on off switch for your bandsaw. You essentially just press start, the blast gate will open. The extractor opens and starts, and you're done bandsawing. You would turn your bandsaw off. Bandsaw is off now. There's a slight delay to clear the line. Yep. And then your dust extractor turns off as well. So one button did all of that. One button. There was no mucking around. Now the one finger did all of that. <laughs> one finger. It's a great finger. Um, the the uh, blast gate can be positioned wherever you want. So it's not it's just like all blast gates. You can have it right. close to the line. You can have it further away from the line. Yep. So this is something that you can set up kind of in the whole workshop. It doesn't all have to be, you know, in proximity with itself. Um, there is one slight complication to the system though, isn't there? Because uh, you need to bypass the switch in the extractor Correct. to get it to go. Yeah, so it runs off magnetic switches. So we sell the magnetic switch controller and the magnetic switch uh, pre-wired. Uh, you can find it on the website in the item page. Make sure you check that out. You can get it wired up yourself by a licensed electrician, um, but your standard dust extractor will run off a, I can't remember what the type mechanical is. Mechanical? Mechanical switch. Yeah. Um, it needs to be a magnetic switch uh, so that it right. can be bypassed so that the IVAC system can operate properly and efficiently. Yeah, um, so basically the, in order for the IVAC switch to turn the extractor on and off again, um, it needs to be able to to talk to the talk to the machine, with if you leave the mechanical NVR switch that's on the machine on on the extractor uh, in the circuit, that as soon as the current goes off from the IVAC system, um, it won't turn back on again. It won't allow. That's what that's the whole point of an NVR switch. So you need to take that NVR switch out of the circuit. We recommend very 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 strongly that you have someone ticketed uh, to do that. It's not a complicated thing. Um, but it, you are playing with mains power at that point, so it's a good idea to... Uh, there is the uh, capacity for catastrophe, so... There's, a, there's definitely catastrophe capacity um, in that situation. Can, the, I, can, uh, I, can, I, can, I, can I have a go? In a second. Just did. All right, so the blast gates, these ones here are 102 millimetre capacity. We also sell them in uh, 150 or 6 inch capacity as well. So if you do have a larger workshop and yep. you're running a, a larger main, you do have the capacity to get a larger gate. However, they only come in those two sizes, so yeah. now you may push buttons. It sounds cool when it does it. All right. So, if you're like me, and you've punched too many darts in your time, uh, you are a repeat uh, dart puncher, yeah, serial dart I actually puncher. don't know what that slang means, but... Um, cigarettes. Punch oh, cigarettes. Punch, yeah. Oh, okay. And darts, so, no, no. Smoking don't. cigs. Yeah. Smoking um, cigs. Ripping yeah. cigs. So if you if your cognitive capacity is a little bit degraded, um, as a result of recreational, you know, you might have activities. I don't know, we'll call them. You know, yeah. Yeah. A life well lived, <laughs> shall we say. Um, what were we still talking about? Oh yeah. So. Uh, you, you will have been in this situation where you've got this wonderful setup um, and you know, you're like, oh la la la, I'm just going to like thickness the heck out of this, um, you know, really expensive um, rosewood or something like that. And you go to your thicknesser and you've forgotten to, t to open the blast gate, mm -hmm. turn the extractor on, um, and that's going, whoo, making the noise and everything. And you're feeding it through and you've got your earplugs and you, you know, and you think, hell's bells, the place is filling up with rosewood dust. Goodness gracious. You spend the neck seriously. That stuff gets everywhere. It 
it goes up into the cracks and crevices and corners and it's, it, you know, two minutes worth of thicknessing without any extraction uh, is, is not worth the time and the hassle and the, like it's, it's seriously non-time efficient. Yep. Um, this is one of those things you want yeah. to uh, switch off and not have to c concern yourself with yep. anymore. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We so will this now. Is awesome. Hopefully uh, that word salad translates and uh, we'll now take a couple of questions if you guys have got any. <laughs> Please feel free to uh, jump in the live chat. Remember, like, share, and subscribe. Help us grow. Yeah. We've got a, Barry's having a problem with his vacuum. Big bad okay. bustling Barry. Barry's having a problem with his cyclone extractor. Okay. And um, the pleated filter requires cleaning every 30 minutes. Mm. So why would that be happening? Is it on a cyc the pleated filter in a cyclone system? Um, I don't know, we could ask him, but like, um, let's assume it is. Well, I imagine you'd need to, obviously, as you saw me uh, spinning that turbine handle, you need to make sure that your pleated filter or cartridge is clean, constantly, uh, if you are doing a lot of high volume yeah. uh, dust making work. I think that's right. I think it's, it's, it's relative to what you're doing, isn't it? Um, if you're producing a lot of finer material, so sanding, Sawing with a with a fine TPI blade, mm -hmm. um, that sort of work, you're going to actually produce quite a high volume of fine stuff, and the filter will will load up a lot quicker. If you're doing things like thicknessing, ah, he's got a CNC machine. Ah, MDF. Oh yes. Well, there it is. So, so yeah. medium density fiber, medium density fiberboard or MDF yes. uh, is essentially slabbed poison for your lungs. Yep. So, uh, especially if you're using Manufactured board, such as MDF or particle board, or even yep. plywood, uh, they use a lot of glue, like a lot of urea, to adhere those boards together. So the dust particles themselves can be quite hazardous to your health, so you would want to make sure that you are definitely using a pleated, cart pleated yeah. filter cartridge and for those. Well, why and is it blocking up so much, or is it just the nature of the work? It's just the nature of the work. So the, those particles coming off that operation, the, the bit's going very, very fast, yep. so it's taking very small bites out of the out of the, the material as each time it hits it. Um, so the size of the particles coming off are very, very fine, like, like um, you know, float in the air type fine. Yep. Um, they are going to clog the filter faster than bigger particles, basically. Have you so, were, yeah, uh, yeah, if you were just the nature of the operation in that case. Sanding, even sanding down timber at high grits, the particles aren't nearly as fine as MDF particles are. Yeah. Because MDF is essentially just sawdust glued together uh, and then compressed. Yeah. So when you're cutting it and making uh, particles come off of it or of it come off, they're very very fine. So there's no, I mean, there's no. It doesn't mean anything's wrong. It just means that the that um, it's the nature of the work. Yeah, for that operation, you're just going to need to clean the filter more often. Yep. Um, a cyclone is less effective the smaller the particles get. Yep. So we usually think about it in terms of a, a, a threshold particle size, if you like. A given cyclone is going to extract um, particles above that threshold, but below that threshold in size, they're still going to pass through the cyclone. They're not going to be thrown to the side of the cyclone and, and collect in the bottom. They're going to stay in the airflow. Because um, they're be light collected. enough, yeah. and they're going to go through to the filter. Um, Excuse me. So I believe that the bigger the cyclone, the smaller the particles. There's some sort of rule of thumb there. Mm. Again, think, uh, all the specifics. But I think yeah, MDF is going to be. It's yeah. just always going to end up, especially with C, uh, you know with the routing CNC type operation. Yeah. Those particles are very. And it is our goal as well to, uh, outside of you know us having a, a joke and trying to muck around with this, we are very passionate about getting this knowledge into you guys um, so that you can look after yourselves better and your workshop as well. Yep. So that's the idea. We'll have all this information written down in the blog, so make sure you pay attention to that too. Yeah. Um, if you need to ask any more questions, again, we've got the live, uh, the live chat going, uh, and our guys in CS and customer service uh, are manning the phones five and a half days a week, so just either jump onto their chat or give them a call at the shop and they should be able to help you out. Yep, you can even email us, customer.service at timbercon.com.au um, if you've got more detailed questions that can't be answered you know, on, on the phone or the chat or whatever. If you're fortunate enough, you'll get straight through to Jeffrey Dove himself. Yeah, you know, if you're lucky. It's, uh, <laughs> yes, John? Can you demonstrate that thing? It's been sitting there all day. Ah, sitting, yes, the thing, the thing. Dust collection yeah. I, I've been waiting to use this thing. It's perfectly clean. I don't think it's, it's virginal, in fact. Jeff. Verging oh on virginal. 
this thing. So this is something that Do you want to uh, we sell here at Timacon. It is a, it's a, um, yeah, yeah. it's a, what, a vacuum floor attachment, I think they call it. It's the full four inches. So it's got the girth uh, for whatever you, you just attach it. Um, and so, you know, I'm a fan and then you don't have to bend over. So I've got this problem, you know, with my back and everything. So a life well lived, let's call it. Um, What's well, not? And uh, so if you do, you know, if you, you've got a lot of crap on the floor, we have spilt all the sawdust here because we thought it would be decoratively nice to illustrate the, the you know, and so I came in this morning, I was like, we're going to do this live stream, it's going to be great. Jake here is like spilling sawdust all over the shop. I'm like, oh my God, this is terrible. What are you doing? I've, my OCD's triggered. I'm freaking out. I'm very He's practiced like, in the mess. We've got this. It's going to be okay. So I've been looking forward to this all like morning. Yeah, so basically... <laughs> yeah, okay, fair enough. Jake, Jake's the word of the man of few words. I'm the wordy man. I the, iTunes, the iTunes yeah, thing out of the way. That'll right. be all right. It'll be okay there. So anyway, this saves your back. Where are we so, going? So Where do you want to suck it up from? Saves your lungs and your back. Yeah, yeah, here. The okay, well, why don't I move the IVAC thing? Jake will move that thing. How about we both? Uh, see, my back is so stiff. Oh, go on. Okay. Before you do that. <laughs> he was on the clock, too. All right. Is that okay? Probably. You have to Although suck now it in between there. The, now they've seen the back of it. Yeah, that's all right. Can you turn the brand around so we can see the Have shape we got it, like a hose clip to stick on there? Do we think of a hose clip? Let me get this on here. Now it is quite quite stretchy, tight stuff. This stuff. Um, which stuff? The uh, which is good because it means it's you know it matches on there. There you go. So when you're ready. If you're like me and you got sore joints, sometimes it's a bit tricky. Oh, this is going to be awesome. Okay. Go for broke. I feel like the dude in Ghostbusters. Which one? Like, <laughs> Yeah. I'll get that. Okay, so. Alright. I'm doing it. Woo! Look at that. Oh my god. Hold on, hold on. It's actually really good. That's kind of fun. Let me do that. And I can move this around on the wheels. Ah! There you go, sucking that stuff up. Sucking that stuff up. And you can see it going through. You want to have a go? Hang on. Before you, you go any further. What? Am I doing it wrong? No, no. I was just thinking, do you want to no. do a uh, Patrick, Patrick Swayze from Ghost sort of uh, scenario? Isn't that like a love movie, like a yeah, romance Yeah, where she's thing? like moulding the clay and his Patrick Swayze's ghost caresses her and helps her with the... I'm nut. not sure how that applies. How do, how, I thought we could share a moment. That's oh, all. no, that's, I mean, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I'm, no good. Okay. I'm good. You'd I'm like okay. to keep that I private, would you? Married. Okay. Yeah. So, married to the job? Or? She might be watching right now, in fact. Dis disappointed. Ah! That's, a, that's so good. I'm just like... Is that good fun? <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, no? That's if really satisfying. If your, uh, hobbies, <laughs> if your hobbies rescind to nothing but uh, <laughs> extracting dust, then yeah, that's the, uh, that's the tool like, for you. So. You could go into your kid's room. There's Lego everywhere. Like I've told you 50 times you've got to tidy this up. If you don't tidy it up, I'm going to bring the extractor up and you just... Just put your kids in like, the... Put your kids in the bin. Oh, too late now, sorry, it's all going in the bin. Well, the other option is just not have children. Yeah. All the dads in the back here are like, yes, that's yes. a genius idea. Do we have any other questions? Yeah, what if there's nuts and bolts on the floor as well? Phil asked if there are nuts and bolts on the floor. Jeff, what if there are nuts and bolts on the floor? I just suck them up. Yeah, Fair enough. Yeah, that's. 
You probably don't want large ones. Stuff, I don't yeah, like you them, probably so. don't want large ones. Uh, you want to make yeah. sure that you're not spilling stuff all over your dust. You do want it to be a little bit... Um, What's the turbine called? It's called a... Um, impeller. An yeah, impeller. So that's right. So it is a metallic impeller. You don't... Uh, so you yeah. don't want uh, the potential for nuts and bolts getting stuck between the impeller blades. So yep. make sure that your dust is dust and not washers and bolts. Yeah, so some extractors uh, will be rated for or you know designed for that sort of material. If you've got a cyclone in, in front of the impeller, um, then yeah. It's going to go bangity 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 bang as it goes through the cyclone but it won't hurt the impeller. Um, if you don't, um, and in general, I think, avoid sucking up, you know, your 100 mil M8, buddy. It's gonna really not be happy. Um, avoid sucking up anything that is metallic at all, in particular. Um, Shavings, you think? Yeah, if you're, if you're gr you know, grinding a bit of steel, like if you, you know, you got your sander there and you're just touching up your chisel, you're gonna throw a bunch of sparks if it's steel. Um, don't 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 do that. Don't attach it to your extractor. The reason why is those sparks, those little tiny bits of metal, uh, no, super hot. You've got a bunch of flammable dust in your extractor. And a lot of oxygen flying through that bag as well. <coughs> yeah, it's a recipe for n n a bad static. situation. Another static. question. Let's talk about a little bit about static. Yeah, the static. Of a spark and static. Just, so, PVC dust yeah. So the, the alternative, uh, if you are going from you know hobbyist enthusiast up to uh, a more industrial sort of setup, is to um, omit as much dust as as much flexible hose as possible because you do lose a lot of uh, drawing power through the airflow being going through segmented sections of yeah, the hose Yeah, because it's kind itself. of bumpy, right? So it's, it's a bit more turbulent inside yeah. that ducting. So the industrial setup would yeah. be using stuff like galvanised steel or uh, PVC piping, which is very smooth, so there's no friction, there's no uh, impediments for the airflow. Uh, if you did want to go that route, you have to make sure to use PVC pipe, you have to earth it. So that means uh, installing copper wire that will reduce any kind of um, static out of yep. the extraction. Uh, yep. Because obviously with those dust particles, a lot of friction is being created, which creates static, uh, which could ignite all of your particles. Yep. The flexible hose has copper wiring running through it, so it is anti-static. Uh, however, PVC is obviously not. So make sure that you pick up an earthing kit that IVAC themselves um, produce that we sell as well. Yeah, we do. So, and it's pretty simple to install, um, just a matter of some sticky kind of metallic tape and, and yep. so on. Um, that's a really good point. So you've got this material, I mean, you know, one of the things about, I've noticed about Australia is it's a pretty dry place. So dry air, lots of dry, dry, fine particles rubbing on plastic. Mm -hmm. It actually generates quite a lot of static. Mm -hmm. it's, it's surprising how much. Um, anything metallic or earthed that will get near that, the metallic parts of that system, yeah, can generate quite a, quite a spark. Yeah. Um, if you've got solvents, you've got any kind of chemical or anything in your workshop, um, you know, a life well lived, uh, you might be, no, not recreational solvents, just normal ones, but um, industrial you know, solvents. They yeah. could go up bang like that with the, the smallest of a spark, so yes, it's uh, worth thinking about. I'm going to ask the ultimate question too. No, I'm taking. I've just bought a 15 amp machine, but I've got a wall socket that's 10 amp. Ah. Yes. So this is a common question that we get from our customers at, uh, at TimberCon. Yep. Uh, there are, once you reach a certain amount of volts and amperage, or rather volts and watts, uh, the amperage yep. of the circuit uh, goes up. So your, ten, your standard house plug is 10 amps, which you'll find on the vast majority of our machines here. It makes them very accessible to anyone working from home or in a smaller workshop. Yep. Um, the more robust machines will require more power, which means that they require a, a more suitable plug, which goes up to 15 amp. Um, yep. It's not just a case, the plug itself is a different size, so it won't just fit into any standard wall socket. You will have to get your uh, circuit board checked. Um, if it's a, in a particularly older house, it might need rewiring completely because uh, all the wiring may not be able to handle the uh, volts, watts. Ooh. Watts, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. so the volts are always the, the same. The juice. Yeah, the yep. volts are the same on single phase. But so there is one exception. So, um, converter. Yeah. So most machines will um, draw their maximum current on startup, and then they'll settle down to a, um, a sort of a, an operating current. If you've got a machine that's rated for 15 amp, but it's kind of on the smaller side, 
um, it might be that it's only pulling more than 15 amps at, at startup. So there's, there's a device out there called, I think, the Amphibian, I think it's called, and there might be a couple of other versions of that. It's essentially just a converter, so you can plug it yeah. in, you plug the converter into a 10 amp socket, and you plug your 15 amp um, plug into the converter. Yeah, um, it's and it's legal. <laughs> Um, it's it's not legal just to convert, you know, just to just to file down your uh, your 10 amp earth plug. Uh, sorry, your 15 amp earth plug and stick down 10 amp. <laughs> so don't do that. But these devices, they're pretty, they're you know, pretty cost effective. But they won't work um, on a machine that's regularly drawing more than the 10 amp. You will blow the fuse, you know, you pop the fuse on on the regular. So if you're putting through a big bit of timber through a big machine. Um, and the motor starts working harder, it'll start pulling more current and, and the amphibian won't help you there. It's only for the startup current draw. My experience, I've seen a lot of cowboys do some pretty crazy stuff, so um, jokes aside, <laughs> uh, make sure you speak to a licensed electrician yep. about this because it's very dangerous if you muck around with live current. Um, don't go mucking around with it, it's just yeah. that simple. If you need 15 amp, get an electrician in to take a look at it if yep. you're not sure. Yep, so, so it's something to think about too when you're specking out a new machine, just check the requirement in terms of the the power draw, the current draw on there. Um, and a 15 amp machine is obviously a step up in terms of usually you know, a three horsepower type motor and it's a big one. Um, and it's actually kind of cost effective. I think your average garage install for 15 amp might be 250 bucks, 300 bucks for it to get a qualified person out. So in the scheme of things, not too much. So. Question from Ash, do you guys sell- Hello Ash. Yeah, pipe kits. We do. So, if you look behind us, you'll, or rather, behind me, um, there's part of a kit that we have on the wall there as part of our display. Uh, we sell essentially a kit with most of the majority of those fittings that the plastic pipe is attached to, uh, including, I believe it's 12 or so uh, lengths of that clear plastic pipe, which again needs earthing if you're going to use it. Uh, uh, we also yep. sell a similar kit in 63 mil or two and a half inch. Um, you'll find them on the webpage. Uh, I'm sure the guys will have links to those in the description below. And there's sort of brackets, and there's sort of it's a pretty complete, comprehensive kit. We yeah, also so. sell them in kits with just flexi hose as opposed to uh, the plastic yeah. tubing as well. Yes, question. And all of our <laughs> producers are ground in kit, yeah? Yes, yep. we've already mentioned that. Yep. Yeah. Oh. And just yep. to mention it again, IVAC. Yep. IVAC produces, produces a earthing kit that we also sell. So. Yep. Yeah. And it is easy to use. So Very straightforward. It comes with the instructions. It's, it's, yeah. And if you have any final questions, please make sure you uh, jump into jump into the live chat again. Uh, give us guys a call at the shop uh, or send us an email, customer.service at timbercon.com.au. Yep. Um, this was part two of the blog. So make sure you jump onto the blog in the section of the website that says blog. Yep. Uh, for the first part, if you are unsure about today's topic of discussion uh, or if you have any questions that uh, need to be clarified, they should be pretty comprehensive that blog. Uh, the second one will yeah. be up within about a week or so. Tuesday. Should be up by Tuesday. So it'll touch on pretty much everything that we've spoken today. Uh, designing your workshop, uh, organizing what fittings you need, calculating your CFM, uh, location of your machinery. Um, Alex's life story. Alex's life yeah. story, old mate, yeah. uh, old mate's life story. Status. Yep. All that kind of stuff, yeah. Um, and one of the things that we that we didn't do a lot of today, because obviously limited time and limited brain power or whatever, is CFM. Cognitive capacity. CFM calculation. Yeah. Um, that that can look a little bit intimidating. It's not too bad uh, once you get your head around it. We're always happy to help you with it. Um, Read the blog. And yeah. yeah, check the blog. It's, all, it's covered over in great detail in the blog. So, so what we were hoping to, uh, or at least the philosophy of this discussion today was to hopefully open up a dialogue, inspire our viewers um, or our customers, or even if you're just tuning in now, to think about uh, dust extraction Hi, as something a little more worthy of attention, um, yeah. not just for your machines, not for just for your work, but also for your own health as well. Yep. Um, when you break it down, it does get quite scientific, but fortunately we've done our best to explain it um, in a very approachable manner, um, maybe. Well, he's been approachable. Yeah. I don't know, I've, yeah, but you know. Um, well, thank, thank you, Jake, because um, you know, I always appreciate uh, the chance to spend more time with Jake, uh, and this definitely has been one of those chances. I mean, you come to the store, you can spend time with me if you like, yeah. Yeah, well, when we're not in lockdown, obviously. In lockdown, it's, it's difficult. You know, I spend my time at home um, thinking about Jake. Uh, 
right, let's just wrap this up. Sorry, done. sorry. All right, okay, we're running out of time. All right, okay, sorry. That's so make right. sure, uh, hopefully you guys have found today engaging. Um, I've been asked to show off, a, I shouldn't say a certain appendage, but... Um, I'm not going to. Uh, <laughs> so like last Thank time... Thank you, audience participation today. You've all been <laughs> tremendous. Uh, yeah, the it was the elbows. It's not the... Uh, You've got to comment on his YouTube nothing, video. It's nothing south so. of the... It's all north of the border, I assure you. Uh, yeah, hopefully we um, illuminated you guys to uh, some dust extraction questions you may have had, whether or not you didn't even consider it as part of your workshop. Hopefully you do now. Uh, hopefully you have a better understanding of it. Uh, we've got the second part of the blog coming up uh, by Tuesday. So if you do have any, if there's any information that you need that we didn't cover today, which is almost a certainty, it'd yeah. probably be paying a dollar two yeah. odds at, <laughs> at the TAB that we've missed something. Um, check out the blog. Uh, make sure you like, share, and subscribe the page to help us grow, so we can keep bringing you quality content like, um, well, Mr. Jeffrey Dove here himself. Thank you. Thank and you. Uh, if you do Thank have you. any more questions, the live chat will be going for a little while longer. The guys in customer service will be here until one o'clock Melbourne time. So if you have any questions, they can answer it as well. Give them a call at the Melbourne store or Perth if you're in WA. Um, email them through customer.service at timbercon.com.au uh, for any more questions outside or rather inside business hours. Wrap it up. Um, They're calling. Yeah. They're calling. Is that about it? Is that about it, it Jeffrey? That's it. It is Jay Russell. It is. So thank you for watching, and uh, we'll see you again next time. And um, get extracting. I've been thinking. I've been thinking of a great catchphrase: get extracting. Suck. Okay. Suck. <laughs> Start sucking. Start sucking. <laughs> Thanks, Bye. guys. Well done. <laughs>